Right, it's about welcome back to the shop. We're gonna have a little shop chat. So, <laughs> there are engine designs all over YouTube. Absolutely all over YouTube. There is these weird little wankle things with 50 lobes, 2 lobes, 5 lobes, 50 lobes, 60 lobes, 7 lobes, liquid pistons, flapper pistons, omnivore engines, free pistons, and everyone can now, well, can now understand what I'm getting at. You can do videos and you come out with all the scientific jargon, you can come out with predicted power results, you can come out with flashy solid works designs and make it like you know what you're fucking doing and so on but with a lot of these engines there is two things going on number one is that they give no discernible difference to engines that are already in production right now but just cost more because they're more complex or doing something weird or they just are fundamentally flawed and don't work people keep on sending me designs of engines and stuff which is good keep on sending them you know what I mean? And that's a good thing to have. And I love seeing what people are working on and so on and so on. But this is how it works in the real world. Manufacturers have made engines, and if we just take the dick and the balls for example, it is a very, very simple engine. There's not real any magic in there. How did they get shitloads of power? Well, just fucking boost it. <laughs> it is I-beam rods, pistons, crankshafts, cylinders cylinder heads following pretty much the same rules now this is kawasaki with a project where they can do what the fuck they want this is kawasaki and the heavy industries they even got all the people from different fields and different parts of the company involved the supercharger itself the impeller was designed in-house by kawasaki heavy industries um you know aero tech kind of department everyone got involved in this and they're trying to make off a show-off bike to try and show that the green little monsters have still got something to fucking scare people with and so on and that thing absolutely greases everything including that formula one car which if you think about it is crazy because that's got massive tires shitloads of grip and all that kind of rubbish and it greases the shit out of that well done kawasaki so i did the oil engine and a few people picked up on the little hints like saying putting evans in it and so on that is an example, and there were loads of comments, and don't feel bad if you did this, but there were loads of comments going, oh, excellent idea, and my God, that's genius, and blah, blah, blah. That's the whole point. It's not. <laughs> that engine is fundamentally flawed in quite a few different ways. Like, people are saying, all right, so you've got a floating piston. How the fucking hell do you start the thing? Very good question. There isn't really... There's ways. Them ways are extremely complicated and complex and not worth bothering with. That engine design is basically a floozy, That's, it's bullshit, it, it won't work. Yes, people are saying, oh, it's already been done. That was the point I was trying to just, I'm now going to iterate how that engine, it's just pointless. You've got the pumping losses are really quite high. You want to transfer force through incompressible things. Now let's just get on to that for a second. I'll go into more detail in other videos because it is a bug bind with me. When you go to school, they tell you that air is compressible and that water is in fluids are incompressible, which is complete fucking rubbish. It's hardly noticeable. Still, that's not fucking telling people anything. You know, that's like saying millions of people do cocaine. It's fine, give it to your seven-year-old girl. No, fuck me. You know what I mean? No. Jesus Christ. All right, so... Fluids are compressible, fucking hell, metals are compressible. Metals are compressible, otherwise, if fluids weren't compressible, your brakes wouldn't work, right? Because your brakes wouldn't flow. There's this thing called the bolt modulus, uh, which we're going to go on about brake fluids, because someone said, why can't you use water as a brake fluid? You can, but I want to, I want to talk about the differences and why we go from ester bit, like glycol, eth ethers based stuff to bleh, fucking chemistry to uh, the silicon ones and why they change backwards and forwards and why they use castor oil hydraulic fluid and stuff in the past that's for a different video but steels are compressible you can compress you know doing extrusions and stuff like that forging just shows you compressibility of metals you can compress fucking anything saying that water and liquids are incompressible is a fucking lie it's like the flow of electrons and all that kind of shit you get taught at school. It's all fucking nonsense. But anyway. 
the pumping losses, the hydro locking, and all these other problems that that engine suits, uh, transferring energy, all this kind of shite. If you can transfer force through a solid, you'd much rather do that than you would a liquid. If you look at your brakes, your brake system, you are actuating a solid plunger that then is transferred through a fluid to then another solid. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Um, cavitation, what you do on the intake stroke, heat transfer, the thermal expansion. There is loads of fundamental problems with that engine, which normal people have no idea about. If you ask a normal person, you can't compress a fluid. You can, sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Stuff like that. The fact of the matter is, is these ideas look good and no matter how happy and chirpy and how I make it sound like it's brilliant and how I badmouth pistons and conrods and cylinders and stuff like that and how much I say this alleviates this problem. The, you know, I watch Thunderfoot just for some of the uh, bullshit videos like uh, uh, Elon Musk and solar roadways and stuff like that. You, you, these people get loads of money and all these people like Duke engines and swash plates and all these other things free piston engines we're going to start doing videos on combustion thermal efficiency mechanical efficiency mechanical advantages stuff like that and then all of this should start to become obvious energy transfer, losses, parasitic losses how they can be measured and so on but, the point is, is that these people have literally test beds and research, but they never really release the numbers, they don't show you something comparative, they are basically paying their mortgage, right? You can get a group of your engineer mates, and people think, because you're an engineer, you know what you're doing. There are a lot of bad engineers, there are a lot of good ones. I think I sit about in the middle, there are some guys I work with who are fucking outstanding engineers. It's just the way their minds work and stuff like that. This is why we have design reviews. This is why I spend half my time going sat in a fucking meeting room and we hash out the ideas. People come out with different and better ideas and then we bounce off each other. We do design reviews and stuff like that. This is why we do this. Right, everything in engineering and physics is not understood perfectly. This is why we can still make bikes better and better and better, and engines better and better and better, more understanding, more money, stuff like that. These people who make these engines and have little design houses, and there's five or six of them just chipping away at it, is all worthwhile. But the fact of the matter is, is they're trying to convince you of these things because they've got a mortgage to pay. And if they can get, especially government contracts, especially military contracts, um, you know, and they always now they always aim at stuff like drones and stuff like that. If you can get ten million pounds funding or hundred million pounds funding for the next ten years, at the end of it, when it all falls through and it doesn't work and they're not interested and they walk away, you've been paid for them ten years. You have pretty much paid half of your mortgage off, and then you go and get another job. It's as simple as that. But these ventures. I'm not saying that there are no new ideas that are better than the current one we've got. That would be, um, what's the word? That would be naive and that would be stupid to think that there is no improvements on these things. Chipping away at these improvements is fine. Wasting money after just doing the pen and paper, you know, the, the back of the envelope type calculations, most engineers would look at that, do a, you know, do a bit of an analysis take you maybe a week max if you've got all the numbers and access to all the information and go no 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 the losses are too great or you're going to hydro lock or you're going to do this or there's going to be horrible cavitation or blah 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 and then you'd say no and walk away from that the fact of the matter is is that they are biased they believe in their idea they believe they can make this work and no matter how much money they chuck at it they think they can make it happen for example even manufacturers do it you know, Yamaha obviously got some kind of data saying that their five valve heads did improve, you know, the efficiency of the engine. And then they stepped away from it. They walked away from the Genesis engine because it just wasn't worth it. The improvements were so little versus what they were spending on it. It just didn't make any difference. Not only that is time goes on and while the head department is working that, the coatings department or the crank department come out with something else that gives you that slight improvement but costs fuck all difference so they say knock the genesis five valve head shit on the head and let's just fucking go with this because 
it's five years later, let's stop burying money in this. There's also them considerations. If you can, and there's a lot of designs where people make designs and they're absolutely convinced they work. It is not hard and doesn't cost that much money, not as much as some people might think, to make a prototype out of scraps and bits. An excellent example of that is AVE. He has an idea, he then makes something with bits and pieces that he finds, just to prove the concept out. He then does it and goes, oh, this is going to take a lot more research and work. Or he goes with it and says, fucking hell, that works, that's great. Uh, when he used silly putty for casting and stuff, yeah, it was a bit shit, but it, the, the principle worked. Then you have to basically look at that versus the, the, the uh, process that's in effect right now and go, well, is it actually making a difference? Is it actually beneficial? If it's not, then drop it. If it is, then you can progress with it further. The fact of the matter is, is these guys want massive amounts of funding to sit around and eke away at silly little things. For example, and the best example in the world, is Norman Hossack. Norman Hossack came up with the idea, didn't do a full analysis on it for rotational masses, harmonic stuff like that. Instead, he just fucking built one. He built one out of perspex just to get the idea in his head, see if there's any major problems he could see, and then he built a miniature version. You go out, you can get wire eroded stuff, you can get machine stuff, even if you're not doing it yourself. You can pay for these things, couple of grand, get it built, run it, and go, it runs. Then after that, he lost interest in the suspension stuff he went off with, which actually did work, and BMW did buy into it and all the rest of it. Well done, you know, that is engineering at its best. He sat there with that engine, and that's something we are going to do. We are going to expand on Norman Hossack's work with his permission. I've been talking to him. We are going to expand on his work and see if we can actually make a difference from that engine to another. Two Stroke Stuffing's doing exactly the same thing. He has some ideas what he wants to do, and I will do a video about it. Um, and he, instead of trying to get funding off people, see if there's any real, real benefits to this. And if there is real benefits, and it does create big numbers, 10% or more horsepower for the same package, that will get people sniffing that will get people's interest. Generally what happens is they just buy the idea off you. That's what they do. If things are really worth it, you get the people who've got the money. These people are trying to start standalone companies, like the Duke engine and stuff. They can do as much testing as they want. It's always dyno stuff. I want to see real world applications. Like I say, I've said it before in a video, my engine that I'm designing, I'm going to build, you won't see that build until everything's ticked off as in patents and stuff like that as soon as that engine is built i'm going to stick that in a, another bike frame and compare it directly against and measure everything measure performance fuel economy noise weight cost analysis absolutely everything and see if it makes a difference if you can get 10 percent more power 10 percent better fuel efficiency out of the same cost or very close to and stuff like that then you might be onto a winner these people, Felix Wankel did it, he worked on the engine for a long time on his own before he got the interest of everybody else. He can prove that it works in the real world and that's what it's all about. You can do whatever you want in CAD, you can make impossible shapes and stuff. Just because, you know, mine wasn't a very good presentation, I've just got a whiteboard and I'm just yabbering on. But I could have snazzed that up and made it look like it's a proper presentation. Actually for the shits and giggles, I might even do that hide the fundamental flaws and just make a video presentation that makes it look like it's absolutely fucking awesome but yeah this is the whole point is that people you know and people will put money into these these will back these things oh fucking hell there should be a process an actual set in stone process of prove it first before you even take it to that solar water thing where it's a dehumidifier extract yeah these bastards They've got the money, they've got the two million pounds worth of funding, they've just spent it for the last five years, then they fuck off, everyone's out of pocket and you get nothing. It's a waste of human resources, it's a waste of time. Ideas that really work. So I used to work for a company where we used to make basically organic semiconductors, organic semi uh, transistors basically. It was a flexible display, it's a display that works like a Kindle but you can literally flex it. Right, it's all—it's just basically a layer of PET plastic. So basically the same stuff as your coat bottles. Planarizing layer. It was gold, titanium, and then you basically spot a coated more gold on it. Had vias, 
basically had we used photolithography to make the sense of the actual transistor fingers and all the rest of it and we basically layered it we used rhinos and stuff which are organic semiconductors you made this panel and this panel would basically just it would show you a video or something and you could proper bend it and twist it and stuff and it would be fine problem with that is is that you have to have batteries and stuff and you can't flex them and all the rest of it so you have to have a substrate so it's kind of like a waste of time millions have been pumped into that but the first ever one was made by i can't remember his first name his name last name's friendly he was the guy who run the company and he basically discovered that in 1989 doing one cell at cavendish lab uh, cavendish lab, lab lab the cavendish lab in cambridge he did that for his phd and then you can then prove that it works on a small sample and then he ba we basically shrunk it to make you know because he made one giant transistor you know you prove it out and over time you know and one day they will be picked up because they'll be able to make flexible batteries or something that can flex with it wrist straps that are flexible that kind of rubbish or maybe imprints on the inside of your helmet that are semi-translucent stuff like that but you can see what i'm saying is is that you have to prove it on a small scale first People don't spend, Norman Hossack again is an excellent example. You start off with a single cylinder, mini version. There are guys making mini V8s and mini Merlin engines and all the rest of it. You make a mini version, so it's cheap. You make a mini version, and then if it works, then you go to bigger scale. Once you go to, you know, one to one scale, the real scale, you do a 125 or a 250 single cylinder, and then you compare it against the real thing. Cost, weight, and everything. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.